Today we're going to be taking a look at Letters from Whitechapel. It's a two to six player bluffing deduction game where you take the role of either Jack or the police. It's 1888 in the London district of Whitechapel and Jack wants to take five victims over the span of four nights. If he can take those five victims over those four nights and make it back to his hideout at the end of each night, then Jack wins the game. If the police catch him or prevent him from making it back to his hideout at the end of the night, then the police win the game, catch Jack, and can bring him to justice. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components, setup, and how a night or round works in Letters from Whitechapel. Now let's look at the components for Letters from Whitechapel. We're gonna start with the main game board that's in the center of the table. Next we have Jack's screen up here at the top. And the great thing about Jack's screen is that it has all of the numbers and the layout of the game board behind the screen so Jack isn't giving away any clues when they're looking at particular numbers behind the screen. Next we have the move track sheet which allows you to track the movements of where you've moved as Jack. Next we have the wooden pawns. You see there are Jack pawns which will be tracking the position of the knight and what knight it is. You have the Wretched Pawns, which are your possible victims. And you have your Police Pawns, which will be moving around the board trying to catch Jack. Next we have the Wooden Tokens. The Wooden Tokens are the Women Tokens, which are the white ones, which will be going on these red circled numbers. The Patrol Tokens, which will be going on the big black squares with a yellow outline. And then we have the Time of Crime token, which will be going on the particular Roman numeral that matches when the crime occurred. Next, we have the Markers. Next, we have the Markers. The yellow marker are the clue markers that will indicate places where Jack has been. Red is your crime scene marker, which lets you know where the crime took place and the blue marker, which is an optional variant, are false clues. Next we have the two tokens. You have the coach token, which will allow Jack to take two moves in one turn. And then you have the alley token, which will let Jack take a move through housing in one particular turn. Then we have the reference sheets that each player will receive. We have tiles that go for each particular police officer and will let us know who the head of the investigation is for the night. And then finally the letters that you see in the center of the table and those are another optional variant. Now that we've seen the components, let's look at how a setup is done in Letters from Whitechapel. Now let's look at the setup for a game of Letters from Whitechapel. First, the game board goes in the center and while we're setting up this game board, we must notice that the circles with the numbers inside are where Jack and the Wretched move, and these dots, these black squares, are where the police move. Next, we choose one person to be Jack, and the rest are the police. Once we've done that, we're going to give each person their reference sheet. Now, starting with Jack, Jack gets the screen, his track sheet, also the clue and crime markers, and the time of crime, and the women wooden tokens. Lastly, Jack gets the coach and alley tokens. Now, as Jack, you're gonna go ahead and put in where your hideout is located in that top circle. Make sure that you're using a white number and not one of the reds from the board. Now, the police 
Get Their Police, and Wretched Wooden Pawns, as well as the Patrol Wooden Tokens. And they are going to shuffle the police tiles and place them face down in the bottom left corner of the board. And then we're going to clear off any of the optional variants that we are not going to be using and placing our jack wooden pawn on night one and then putting the other one close by so that we could indicate when the first murder occurred on the first night. And that's the setup for Letters from Whitechapel. So let's go ahead and jump into what a night or round looks like. There are four nights in the game. The first night, there will be one victim. The second night will be one victim. Third night, you'll have two victims. And then the final night, we're back to one victim. Each night consists of two parts, a murder and a hunt. The murder part has nine steps. You'll also see these referenced on your reference sheets. Step number one, Jack is to collect the coach and alley tokens corresponding to the night that we're in. Step two, the Jack player is to collect and place the women wooden tokens corresponding to the night face down. They're gonna be going on these big red circles and he is the only one that is gonna know which one the targets are. Step three, the police are going to turn over the top tile to see which player is the head of the investigation. Now that player is going to place the seven patrol wooden tokens on the large black squares with the yellow borders. Making sure to put the patrol markers face down because only the police are to know where the actual police will be and where the fake ones are. Step number four, Jack is going to turn over the women wooden tokens and place wretched pawns where the red dots are located. Step number five, Jack is going to choose to take a victim or wait. If he chooses to take a victim immediately, then we will skip down to step number eight. If he chooses to wait, then for each time that he waits, step number six, the time of the crime token is moved and the police can move the wretched pawns one place. Along with that, step number seven, Jack can reveal a particular police pawn. Now this waiting can happen multiple times, giving Jack more time to make it to his hideout, but would allow the police to move the wretched pawns closer to a position of their liking. 
Step number eight. Jack has chosen his victim and is going to place a crime scene marker where that victim was. Also, Jack is going to put his second pawn on the time of crime token on the time track, as well as putting that number on his track under that particular time. So in this case, he would put three in the box of the first night in the Roman numeral one. Step nine, the police reveal their patrol tokens and place their police markers where they're located. Now we're ready to move on to the second part of the night, which is the hunt. This consists of three steps. Step number one, Jack is going to make a move and mark it on his sheet. If he chooses to use a special move, he needs to make sure to put the token on the time track as well. And it's also at this point, I do wanna indicate that you cannot use one of these tokens immediately going into a hideout. So your last move before a hideout has to be a regular movement. Step two of the hunt, starting with the head of investigation going clockwise, each of our police are going to move zero to two squares. And finally, step number three, starting with the head of investigation again going clockwise, each one of the police are going to look for clues or try to make an arrest. Now, when you're looking for clues, you're gonna use the circles that are adjacent to you, and you're gonna call out each circle. As soon as our Jack player indicates that he has been to one of the locations, so if you were the red police and you asked for 34, if he had been there, then you cannot ask for another number. If he hadn't been to 34, you would continue until you get to one he has or you run out of adjacent numbers. Now, if you want to try to make an arrest, you can only ask for one number and that is it. Then the hunt part of the night will continue to go around and around until either Jack announces that he's made his way back to his hideout or the police have arrested Jack, or they've cut him off where he could not make it to his hideout by the 15th turn on the time track. These nights will continue, and there's a couple of special rules after the first night. So for nights two, three, and four, you cannot use a crime scene location for one of the women wooden tokens. Step three, for the police, a mix of five of the police officers stay in that particular location they ended, and two will go back to the big squares. Now, they could be mixed, so if the blue ended right here, the police could put a patrol token with any color or fake where that particular pawn is located. During the third night where there are two victims, the police will make the first move during the hunt part, and Jack will be able to start at either of the two victims' locations. Now, these nights will continue on and on until the fourth. If Jack makes it through the fourth night and back to his hideout, he wins the game. If at any point through these nights, that the police track Jack down or cut him off where he cannot make it back to his hideout in 15 moves on the time track, then the police win the game and bring Jack to justice.